Uh, hello everyone, my name is Michał Zajons. Uh, actually, I wasn't expecting this to be in English, but I will adapt. Uh, today I will talk about uh, rapid IoT prototyping using uh, Python. Uh, so, how does the process of uh, making application usually look? Uh, it's uh, a complicated process. Uh, first of all, we make some changes. That takes some time. Uh, next, we try to compile the project. It, makes, uh, it also takes some time. We try to flash the device if we're talking about some IoT devices. And next, we need to reboot the device, test our changes, uh, and if something doesn't work, we do uh, do this from the beginning and over and over again. This process might be uh, long and tedious, uh, and it all takes time. So, can we do it uh, a little faster? Well, uh, today I will try to show you uh, how could we speed up this process uh, by making a prototype using uh, Python. Uh, today I, I will talk a little about LVM2M protocol, uh, so I'm not sure if everyone knows what uh, LVM2M protocol is, so to have everyone on the same page, uh, I will just say that uh, this is uh, it stands for a lightweight machine-to-machine -machine protocol. It's a client-server protocol. It's uh, used on embedded devices uh, to communicate with the server. Uh, it handles device management and telemetry. And what's, uh, what's one of the most important things of L2M2M protocol, it defines a data model uh, that uh, is very useful when developing uh, some IoT applications because it's standardized. Uh, it's a free level uh, model, so the data model looks like this. We have uh, some objects uh, those uh, objects can destri uh, describe some uh, uh, some sensors from the device. Uh, uh, the dev uh, the objects could have a lot of instances. So, for example, if we're talking about an object that uh, that is a temperature sensor you might have connected more than one temperature sensor uh, to your device and those will be multiple instances of uh, a temperature sensor and on the third uh, level of uh, uh, of this data model we have the resources uh, resources are uh, what describes the uh, actual da uh, data in the object. So those uh, could be some kind of values like the actual temperature that the sen sensor is uh, reporting. Uh, those resources can be readable, writable, or executable. Uh, I will also talk today about something that is called Svetovit. Uh, what is Svetovit? Uh, well, Svetovit is a uh, L, uh, L2M2M uh, client uh, created by Afau System. Uh, it's available for free uh, as a pre-built uh, packages for Raspbian that you can install and just start using uh, without any uh, any payment. Uh, in, uh, as a backbone for the L2M2M connect, uh, connection with the server, uh, it uses Andre, one of our uh, different project, uh, which is a library uh, for, uh, that uh, gives us the communication. And it's written in C++, so anyone who was expecting, I would say, it's written in Python, you need to be a little more patient. We will get there. Uh, and last but not least, it's 
uh, it allows us uh, to use FSDAM. And this is another name which I need to explain and say what what is FSDM. So FSDM stands for File System uh, Data Model. It's a plugin for our uh, Svetovic client, uh, which uh, provides an easy way of creating new uh, L, uh, LWM2M uh, objects, which are represented by just executable, executable files uh, on our device. So like in this image uh, here, uh, we can see that I have some kind of object uh, 3334 uh, and it has a bunch of files assigned to it uh, in the resource uh, folder that are executable. Those uh, those files will describe our uh, resources. So coming back to the uh, image from the previous slides, uh, we can see that uh, the resources are represented by those uh, those uh, executables, and uh, uh, by running those executables, we can perform a read operation, a write operation, or execute operation if the resource is uh, allows for it. Uh, additionally, we support two uh, addi uh, two files the uh, that handle uh, multiple instances in this uh, data model and that handles transactions. I won't be uh, coming in depth into the transaction uh, in L2M uh, protocol, but it's a, uh, it's a mechanism that allows us to be sure if we're writing more than one resource at a time uh that if uh, a write to one of those resources will fail the device will uh, fall back to a previous state of the data, uh, data model uh, so svetovic periodically runs uh, those executables from uh, this folder and queries the output of those executables updating its internal data model. Uh, if there were uh, any changes in the value that uh, those executables would uh, uh, produce, it will, uh, it can then inform the management server uh, about those changes. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, one more thing. Uh, those files that we had here, uh, those can be basically any executable. So it might be a, a script, uh, something written in a scripting language, but it doesn't need to be uh, written in a scripting language. Uh, a scripting language is nice because it allows us to uh, modify those files on the fly without uh, the need of recompilation and uh, uh, and that that's the benefit we'll try uh, we'll try to leverage here. Uh, so uh, for this talk, I planned a little live demo to demonstrate uh, how this can be used. Uh, the the demo I will show it's maybe it won't be very complicated. Uh, but I hope it will uh, give some, you some insight how can this be used in bigger projects uh, in an easy way. So I will use a Raspberry uh, Pi board with Linux and I will write some uh, Python code. Uh, that will allow me to come uh, using our uh, management server. Uh, it will allow me to uh, light LED uh, light uh, remotely. Uh, so going to the 
live demo. I'm already connected to the uh, to my Raspberry Pi uh, using SSH, uh, and uh, I already installed Svetovil on this device, uh, as this won't be the part of the presentation. First of all. Uh, uh, after installing Svetovic and Onlich packages, uh, we are giving a nice tool. It's called uh, Svetovic SOS DEM tool. Uh, what this does uh, is it will help us create a new ob LVMTM object. Uh, skeleton, which we will then fill out. So. Uh, this tool can uh, either uh, get the parameter list or generate. So let's list the object that are available to us. Those are the standard uh, object uh, defined by Omado uh, that we can uh, fetch from the, in the definition of those objects. We can fetch from the internet and create a template for, uh, for our object that we then will need to fill in. Uh, so we are interested in object 3311 which is the light controller. So let let's see how to generate this object. Uh, we have a helpful tooltip here uh, that uh, says how to use this. So I will just uh, you don't need to use sudo for uh, running this tool. I will just write in a, f uh, uh, in a folder where I need root privileges uh, to write. So that's why I'm using sudo. Uh, but that's all I need to. Uh, so if we know which object we're interested, we can state uh, this in the tool, we're interested in object 3311. Uh, the output there should be etc svetovit dm. That, this is the default directory uh, I have configured in the svetovit client to uh, to be represented by the uh, data model. And we're interested in generating some Python code uh, currently, this tool supports also uh, bash scripts, but uh, the presentation said it will be rapid development in Python, so let's go with Python. Uh, so, okay, this is uh, this is uh, cre it created. Uh, uh, created a folder which all the file we are uh, we need okay uh, one more thing in uh, in here uh, I have this connected to our coyote server this is my device and I can see the, uh, here the data model. It's currently empty. It won't be empty for much longer, as I will. Uh, I already created it. But coming back to the uh, uh, coming back to our example, uh, we will. Uh, be interested in uh, resource 5850 if I, I remember correctly. So let's modify that. Okay, so this is our template for uh, that the user needs to uh, fill in to let it uh, work properly. Uh, so it's an on-off switch, it's readable, writable, and that's 
uh, that's what we will be doing here uh, I will do one more thing here I will uh, no, that's I will restart the uh, Svetovit client because I would like to show you how it's uh, so yeah it's it's connected it should create as uh, the light control uh, object. It just need to refresh on our server side. Okay, it's it registered, and as you see, we have some values which doesn't uh, mean a lot. Uh, if you would uh, look in those uh, those files, uh, you would see everywhere that uh, the read uh, functions just return to do to do to do. So we will just modificate this one and and hopefully we will make the LED uh, light up so uh, I will require two additional uh, modules from Python uh, to make this work and I'm interested in modify, modifying the uh, write uh, method so uh, first value and let's, uh, let's read this from standard in uh, this is the basic uh, way uh, that we uh, we will communicate with those scripts by standard in and standard out. Uh, so uh, I need to set up some uh, some information about the. Uh, uh, the GPIO I'm using so uh, set mode is BCM and uh, I will set it uh, this is the pin number 27 I have, have it connected on my Raspberry Pi and I'm interested in uh, the direction output So again, I will pass the value that I read from standard in uh, to GPIO output on pin 27. I save this. Now I can return to our management uh, server and try to turn on the light. So, something went wrong, but that, uh, that's not a problem. Let's just see where did we make a... a mistake. So, yeah, this is the log from uh, Svetovit. It says, says at the... Uh, Oh yeah, I've make, made a typo. I've uh, write Esther the, the EO red. So let's modify the, the this standard in 
And let's try again. Hopefully this time there was no more typos. And the LED has a uh, light lighter. Uh, okay, there is still one more problem in uh, the implementation of uh, of this resource. Uh, mainly if we will see uh, in the read resource, uh, we will always return zero. So, if I will ask it, uh, ask uh, the server to read the value, it will return false, which isn't really true because the light is still on. <laughs> but we can also easily fix the issue. Uh, let me just turn off the light. Okay, uh, Svetovic comes with an additional module, the key value store, which might be useful in this case. Uh, it will allow us to st uh, save the state of the, uh, uh, the LED, which is on or off. So let's quickly use this. Okay, I will return the value that I have in the memory, but I still need to write the right, uh, save the, the right value. Okay, I hope I didn't make another typo here. Uh, okay, let's again turn on the light. It's on, and now we take the confirmation. Uh, we can read the value from the device, and it says it's the light is on. If we will turn off the light and check the value again it should stay as false which actually is the correct value here uh, okay so that was uh, the live demo I prepare uh, so, as you can see, it can be used for simple, uh, simple projects where you want to turn on the light uh, through the internet, but uh, does FSDM Sveto and Svetovi, does it have some real use in some bigger projects? Uh, well, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, currently, I think it's still wasn't publicly uh, released, but we are very close in releasing uh, a part of software uh, where we simulate the, uh, the thing that uh, uh, op the web UI for the OpenThread border router uh, does. So, 
uh, using FSDM, we created some scripts that communicate with the open thread for the router process that allows us to uh, configure new uh, open thread uh, mesh networks to add the devices to the networks. And we can all do this uh, via our management server uh, through the internet. Uh, so this shows that it can have, have some uh, uses uh, on bigger scale. It doesn't need to be uh, just a small prototype. It can be used uh, for bigger projects. Uh, also, I am aware that one of uh, the companies uh, was using Svetovit for some uh, prototype, internal prototyping uh, to check if uh, LW, uh, LWM M2M uh, protocol is the, the thing they are interested in. Uh, I think I cannot uh, say the name of the company yet. And I'm uh, I'm still uh, not sure if they will uh, pick the uh, pick this solution or it was only an internal uh, internal prototype. Time will tell. Uh, but this is the presentation I've prepared for you today. Uh, if you are if you have any questions, uh, I can try to answer them. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so they asked me to repeat the question <laughs> because it's uh, it's recorded. Uh, you're asking if uh, this can be only run on Raspberry Pi where you have a Linux device uh, uh, or can you run it on any embedded uh, device? So uh, Svetovit is a Linux, uh, Linux application. It can run on any Linux system. Uh, so I can run it on my laptop. It doesn't need to be a Raspberry Pi, but it doesn't support uh, real embedded devices. Uh, what does support real embedded devices uh, is the uh, library that Svetovit used, so MJ, and it provides us the core uh, communication uh, with the management server. Uh, but this FSDM, well, we need uh, we need uh, Linux, we need Python. So unless you can port uh, port this uh, Python and Linux kernel to the uh, some a small embedded device, then no, sorry, you cannot do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, what happens when uh, the object I'm trying to uh, implement that isn't on the list of this Svetovit FSM tool that generated me this uh, skeleton, which I then filled in? Uh, in that case, uh, you can create your own uh, custom object uh, via the OMA uh, object editor, uh, exported it to XML and the tool also uh, allows uh, this XML file to be an input, which can then be translated to Python or uh, Bash script uh, in the same way. Uh, so uh, for me, if I would do this uh, in the presentation, this would be just a one additional step I would have to take because I would have to download this XML file from OMA uh, we describe the object and then converted it uh, to uh, the Python code. Uh, 
So the tool done, uh, done it uh, for me automatically, but uh, it's also possible to uh, implement custom objects which aren't uh, aren't registered in the OMA. Right? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so can uh, your custom object uh, uh, interact with other objects? Uh, well, those are uh, script files. So depending on what you put there in, in the read write uh, of those functions, uh, you can, let's say you can write to, uh, write to a file and read from the file. And you can have two objects which operate on the same file and in this case those two objects will interact with each another uh, i hope that answered the question okay do we have any more questions uh if there will be uh, other questions. You can probably uh, catch me as call and uh, I'm probably going to leave uh, soon, so you might not have an opportunity to ask me directly. Uh, but thank you for your time. Uh, visit our website uh, at avasystem.com and I hope you enjoyed this evening and uh, uh, and the next presentation that will come in a few seconds. Thank you.